Campbell from wherever he's working at a particular time with us this morning. We're going to hodgepodge some things today. We'll talk hydroplane racing. That'll be the, the biggest focus today. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Tim. How are you doing? I'm good. And you? No, oh, I'm, you know, it's, I don't like snow and I don't <laughs> like early mornings, but other than that, I'm fine. <laughs> Everything else is good. It's fantastic. Everything else is good. You are actually back in uh, town filling in for your uh, colleague, Mark. He is on vacation so you've been in town the, the last half of the week doing some courier stuff yeah he's on vacation we always we always kind of try to take vacation at the end of the march and so mm -hmm. i'm covering for him late this week and, and early next week and uh it's kind of funny it's like it's weird being back uh, I, I don't feel like i left feel like i've been on a long <laughs> vacation i just <laughs> stepped right in I remember all the passwords i remember everything <laughs> goes it's kind of weird it is it's weird getting back in the saddle and not a lot of sports activities we're starting to fire up spring sports winter sports other than the state finals today uh for boys basketball it, that'll end up but uh not really a lot going on right now no if we had had so snow we could have had some pretty good stuff the kentucky schools across the river they all really started this week there were several baseball games that were snowed out this week several softball games trimble had a, a, um, a track meet yesterday that they were supposed to get in and they couldn't get in um, of course hanover's a full going mm -hmm. but the indiana schools don't start really until tuesday tuesday's the big day as, right. as you know right and uh, um and so you kind of hope all this stuff clears up because it's it's here it, and it's here and you know this the spring sports season, fall sports season is a little longer than the spring sports season, not by much, but the spring sports season is so short, and, and when you're trying to, to whittle in 25 softball games and 25 to 30 baseball games, you, you don't want a, a whole lot of weather situations and especially at the beginning of the season well yeah and the, and the biggest problem is you would know the orvc plays the double round robin so you've got to get tw you have to get those 12 games and if you have a lot of uh, rain outs you have a lot of snow outs it makes it really really difficult yeah a lot of people don't realize how short the spring season is if you if you figure that the sectional begins the third week in may mm -hmm. typically right. that's seven weeks that's all it is compared to say almost four months for basketball season it's it's a really short season it is a short Short season, and, and again, when you're dealing with the outdoors, it makes it that much more of a challenge. And as I've told people several times this week, we, we had softball practice outside Monday. We had five inches snow on Wednesday. We were outside practicing softball again yesterday. We've canceled softball practice today. We we have another practice on Monday, and then we're supposed to, to get things started up on Tuesday. So uh, we're going through the same thing everybody else is going through, and that's just trying to get a little continuity with their schedules, and, and it's been very difficult. Oh, well, it's incredibly difficult, and the worst thing about snow is that when when you get snow, and let's say we get, end up getting the four inches that they're calling for today, that's almost like five days of rain mm -hmm. because when it melts, it just sticks, stays around, and there's so much, and it's, it's difficult. It's and, it, and it's really hard, especially considering considering that the IHSA only gives you two weeks to practice. Um, you look across the river in Kentucky, they've been practicing since late February. Right. So they have a lot longer. Of course, their season starts earlier too, mm -hmm. but they have a lot more leeway. Most states do. Indiana, you get two weeks and that's all you get. And, right. and if you've got, especially in the spring, where how often is those, those two weeks in March ideal weather, um, you know, I mean, you imagine most of the baseball and softball teams around here have probably been practicing in the gym all week. And, uh, and absolutely. That's, and that's, that's not how the game is played, no. so it's difficult to practice. And, and it is, and, and you, it's hard to simulate inside a gymnasium. In, in our case at Shaw, our gym doesn't have retractable bleachers, so we can't simulate a field very well. Um, so it's, it's rather difficult. Now, as you look to, to Indiana, too, and you're talking about the, the, the two-week window, we could have actually started our games last Monday. However, that falls into most folks' spring break week, and now there were some some teams in Indiana that did start, and know around the southern part of the area that did start, but that's very very difficult to to schedule games during spring break week because you've got kids typically, and I got one that's on a, a spring break trip across the the seas right now to get everybody there to, to make a full team. Well, yeah, and now, especially when most these schools have gone to two-week spring breaks, mm -hmm. it, it eats up so much time, and a lot of people use it as trips. And, you know, the smaller the school, the less likely you are going to have the players to play. And But even Madison, I, I mean, I, I know Tim Armstrong pretty well. I seriously doubt that they would have been able to have played a game this mm -hmm. week. Um, uh, they may have had the players numbers-wise. Right but it wouldn't have been all the players that they truly needed. So it's, 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 a difficult, it's a difficult thing this time of year for all the spring coaches. One of the things I mentioned about winter sports, it's finishing up now. Southwestern had a great uh, boys basketball season this year. I know you had a chance to go over and see them play over in Paoli. Um, much, much 
success to them in the future because they've got a lot of guys coming back. Uh, state championship for basketball is today, and we were talking before we went on the air about teams that you had covered, not followed where at the part of the state that you're in, but there's some teams that unfortunately New Albany, not one of those teams that made it to the state finals, but some teams that, that you've covered that's that's in playing today. Yeah, I mean, Carmel, I, I, I had, uh, I've seen Carmel's girls play a couple of times. I didn't get a chance to see the boys, um, but uh, uh, Warren Central and um, um, Morristown, I'm trying to think of who else is. So Morristown, yeah. Southwood, uh, Forest Park, and, and no, Forest Park was over at Paoli. Forest they played. At Paoli, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's a really good group. You know, Warren Central's an interesting team, undefeated. Mm -hmm. And uh, to play in the conference that they play in is, is uh, which they play in Carmel's conference. How about that? You right. know, two conference teams in the state championship game. Um, but uh, I won't, uh, yeah, this kind of talks about the <laughs> IHSA as well. Anyway, anyway um, but no, it's, it's uh, to go undefeated in this day and age in this state, especially in that conference, which is ridiculous. Carmel, Lawrence North, Lawrence Central, Pike, Ben Davis, Center Grove. Center Grove had a terrific team. Uh, any people who were following New Albany's run with Romeo, they got to see Trace Jackson Davis, mm -hmm. who's Dale Davis's son, the mm -hmm. former Indiana Pacers. Sure. He plays for Center Grove, 6'9 kid. Junior being recruited by everybody. Right. Um, it's 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 a lot of terrific basketball up there, so you have to literally look at Warren Central and say that they're they're really locked in, but of course they're playing a team that knows them, and, right. and that's going to be a really interesting game. And then Morristown has got um, a, a kid that I don't think a lot of teams know about. He's only it's only a Class A school, mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, is it Logan? I think it's Logan. I can never pronounce his last name. Lang, Lang Capel, mm -hmm. I think it is. Um, the kid scored 2,100 points in his career. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's 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 an absolute scorer. He probably should make the Indiana All Star team. Um, it's uh, a lot of good basketball up there, and it, it ought to be a really good day of games. You know. You hope that people get there to see it because right. it's, uh, the weather's just as bad up there as it is here. Well, and you talk about, and one of the things we always see down here at this part is is we don't see a lot of team New Albany being the savior, but going to Indianapolis to play. But there's a lot of teams down in the southern, Evansville, Bossy's playing, Forest Park is playing. Um, you talk about Warren Central and Carmel, which is a whole different story. <laughs> uh, Morristown, Southwood. There's some teams with some guys with some names, and I think, the the Romeo bandwagon, if you will, kind of opened some eyes for other kids in the state that because of the competition that New Albany played, that uh, teams and fans got to see other players, maybe on a not on the same caliber, but on an equal caliber with what what we saw with Romeo. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that we in Indiana we tend to pat ourselves on the back about how good our basketball is, but I think it kind of almost overshadows how good the basketball really truly is. Sure. Uh, um, you, we talk about Warren Central and New Albany and Carmel and South Bend Riley and even Bossy, but when you even get down to the little schools, it's amazing the talent level that these kids have. It, it, it maybe it's not. It, maybe I shouldn't say talent, but skill. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they they understand the game. They understand how to 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 run an offense or run a defense. And you go to other areas, other states, you don't get that in the small schools. Right. It's almost like a playground kind of atmosphere. It really is a a totally different world. I would say. I'd say us and in California, uh, maybe Florida, and, and I guess maybe New York City. I mean, other than that, you're you're it's it's just a totally different world, and and we really are spoiled here in mm -hmm. Indiana, and we're spoiled with our gymnasiums. You know, you, yeah. you and I were talking to an individual after the the girl. It was the girls sectional. Mm -hmm. No, it was a boy sectional. Boy sectional at, at Shaw mm -hmm. at Edinburgh. Uh, he was talking about how he had moved to Nebraska and he couldn't, you know, and the right. people that he worked with couldn't believe that even the smallest gyms around here have seat a thousand people and they fill them. Um, it's it's a cool state to cover basketball and if you love basketball, mm -hmm. especially at this level, there's probably no other better place in the world. How many gyms you been in covering? I'm at 77. Mm -hmm. 70, uh, I think it was no 79. 79 now. Favorite one? Uh, Shelby. No, Washington. Washington is my favorite. I like Washington. I like Shelbyville, mm -hmm. and I. Still put Madison in my top three. I love yeah. Madison and Columbus North. Those are my people. Oh, yeah, I, we've we've had that Columbus North discussion yeah, before I about how, how well North. it is. Yeah. If if they didn't have that, sh if they didn't have that former stage on the one end, <laughs> it would be my number one gem. Let's uh, let's jump in and talk hydroplane racing. There's there's a lot of things going on and not a lot of things going on and it's typical winter and not a typical winter and. Let's start with uh, the Miss Madison Racing Team, of course, the untimely death of Crew Chief Dan Hoover. Um, I know you, even though you've been two hours away, still kind of got a near to the pipeline about 
what's going on around hydroplane racing with the U1? Yeah, I've been meaning to talk to, to Charlie Grooms. I was going to do it yesterday and I never got around to it uh, to try to get an update on it. Uh, the team still seems to be, you know, the, the team's in a really good place, and, and that's the best thing about this situation. Um, um, I mean, you hate what happened to Dan. It's, it's an awful tragedy. Uh, uh, but fortunately, the team is set up to continue. And with the boat being in, in Seattle, the, the worst part about it was that the timeline was pushed back. I right. mean, they were hoping to have it back here to finish mid, early mid-February at mm -hmm. the latest. And here we are almost in April. And uh, it's it's my opinion now that the boat probably won't come back until the until Guntersville, probably right. after Guntersville, as they, f they, as they finish it in Seattle and then go straight to the test in Tri-Cities, mm -hmm. which is in, in early June. Um, the fortunate thing about it is is that Mark Smith, who if insiders, you know, a guy who probably not a household name, but he was the Miss Budweiser crew chief for ten years, mm -hmm. I'd say yeah. after, after Ron Brown right. was let go, Mark Smith took over, and he and he was the he was the crew chief all the way till the end of the run. Um, he's in charge of the build, mm -hmm. and so you you couldn't ask for a better guy than him. The guy who's working next to him finishing the boat is Dale Van Weringen, the guy who designed the boat. <laughs> And the guy who designed the last Miss Madison boat, and the guy who designed the last two Miss Budweiser boats. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you you have two guys, probably, arguably, the most qualified guys in the sport. I mean, we could have. I don't think anybody would turn Mike Hansen away. No, no. He decided to show up and no. help build the boat. No. Um, so they're in good hands. Unfortunately for us Madison fans, we, we were really hoping that we would have it in town by now so we could look at it right. and, 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 and stare at it. The one interesting thing, and I haven't had a chance to, to get into the team yet, is Dan had a real plan of, of, of putting the two boats together and, and making the hardware interchangeable. He, right. had, he had already he had already uh, um, measured out the shop here in Madison. I think most people would agree with me that there's no way you can get two boats in there. Dan swore to me you could, yeah. that he had a way to get two boats in there so they could work on them at the same time so that the the, the current boat would be a race-ready boat for a backup. He had planned on racing both of them at, at, um, at uh, uh, Tri-Cities in the test, um, possibly, possibly racing both of them here at Madison. Um, I doubt those plans will happen now. Right. But... Um, uh, you never know, but it's it's probably doubtful. Yeah, it's it's again, it was uh, such a uh, uh, an unfortunate tragedy, and and it never is it a a good time when something like this happens. But again, the team had a lot going on, a very busy winter, unlike a lot of winters where it's busy but not at at this magnitude. Yeah, I, I, I kind of describe it like a duck. Yeah. You know, it's on the surface. It looks totally calm, but underneath there's a lot of things going on, and mm -hmm. especially since everything's going on in Seattle, you have no right. idea what's going on. They are building a boat completely from scratch, but the team's been really good about putting updates on their Facebook page, and you get to see it coming along, and, mm -hmm. and the funny thing about that new boat, it'll be really interesting to see, is, is, is Dan told me last year you won't know. You know your, your eye won't. You can't tell the difference. You won't be able to tell the difference. But there's so many different things about the boat. It's mm -hmm. going to be mostly carbon fiber, hardly any wood and aluminum at all in it. And it's going to be lighter, and it's going to be stronger, and it's going to be able to take a beating more. And so it's going to be a real fun thing to watch. And and uh, um, I know I probably speak for almost everybody in the area. I can't wait to see that boat on the water. I I, I agree. And and one of the things that that when we we got this last boat. Uh, before the new one is built now, we talked to Steve David about was the difference between the old boat that they had and the new one. And now, you know, the, the tunnel is uh, two inches wider. Yeah. Uh, okay, big deal. Yeah. Well, he said it is a big deal. It makes a big difference. He said those minute changes that they made from one boat to the next boat, which are making from this boat to the new boat, those minute changes that you and I will never, ever see, but only the designers and builders know, that's what makes a difference, and that's what will hopefully give them the competitive edge. You know, yeah, it's funny when you look at the history of hydroplane racing. We've had so many huge developments in design, mm -hmm. and even the average fan can spot those design differences going going to a pickle fork front, going to a rear stabilizer, certainly the cab over, mm -hmm. uh, uh, turbines, the front canard wing. A and there's been a real lament in the last 20 years that there's no innovation anymore in the sport, that these boats are all the same. And, and, and in some respects, they are. Right. 
but it's the it's those small changes. People don't realize that the 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 the, the last Miss Budweiser boat, the T6, was built it was built with with a lot of carbon fiber, but it was still a lot of, of aluminum and a lot the whole center section's aluminum, the mm -hmm. whole center section's wood, and that's how boats were built. And now they're getting to carbon fiber. Dan, it was Dan's opinion that that 95 percent of the boat could be built built out of carbon fiber now. Wow. That and, and that you could build this thing almost completely. You, you'd still have to have a you know a, a metal propeller, right? You know, and, right. and a plexiglass <laughs> windshield, but. <laughs> But so much of the section, you know, you would open up that boat and, and the center section's aluminum. Mm -hmm. And he showed it to me last summer and the center section was rusted. I mean, yeah. it, there were parts of the boat that were rusted and rusted parts out. And there were there were, there were were wooden frames. People don't realize there's still wood in those boats. And there was right. one wooden frame that he showed me that had snapped in half. Yeah. And you couldn't fix it because of where it was dug into. And, and now all that's going to be carbon fiber. So it's going to be really interesting to see. Well, and I think for the average fan, that doesn't that's a little confusing on well okay so what right you know it's it's like it's like windows xp to windows 7 exactly what, you know what what do you what do you what do you see what it's, it's the same thing in the end but no it's not really yeah i mean the biggest difference is 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 how much of a beating these boats can take mm -hmm. i mean we think about I, I, I like to point out that especially if you watch the movie madison you know the the gold cup madison we could talk even though it's mm -hmm. not the only boat to win one now um that boat was obsolete that boat was right um, it was it was lucky to to make it through that season. Your dad was a part of that team, and they had to rebuild the boat the year before because of the of the accident in Tampa. And part of the reason why it was obsolete is it was wooden. Mm -hmm. It was only 13 years old. Right. You know uh, the Miss Budweiser boats, the the Graham trucking boat. It's 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 almost not, It's almost 20 years old now. Mm -hmm. These boats now they can go so much longer. I mean, you think of that boat, that boat was 13 years old. The current Miss Madison is 10 years old. And so it's almost, it should be almost obsolete, but it's not. And you say, well, part of that is, is, is the technology hasn't changed. No part is the fact that these boats can stay together. Right. And when something happens, when, when you crash the boat, now you just cut off the, the, the sponsor and you, you put a new one on it. Right. You couldn't do that. Oh no. You know, 40 years ago. So no. it's, it's, it's changed the sport and, and it's, uh, it's, it's kept these boats together and in a lot of ways a lot of ways it's probably saved the sport message from somebody downtown that said uh, roads down now down there were just wet really yeah. yeah I came out from Lancaster and there was some there was some pretty slick spots I, right. I, I did a couple of fishtails coming yeah in. it's uh, looks like it's just a little bit of rain and sleet right now maybe so yeah. it, it depends on whether you want to go in the county to what kind of weather you're gonna find today because mm -hmm. that's the way it's gonna be today so if you're out and about be careful as you're driving they let's talk uh, some of the fleet they've they've been working we've heard from some of them we've we've not heard from from some we know the 21 team they've got a new boat that they're they've been working on for a while um, About 10 years yes yeah, like. for a while um, we we know the, the Bert Henderson's had the the former Trend West working on it. Um, I think he's made repairs to the to the seven mm -hmm. um, uh, with the ninety nine point nine. They just announced I think it was yesterday that the Rock will be back for them, uh, which is a team that nobody thought would make a return trip to the circuit after the blowover. And I'm one of them. And yeah, you, yeah we were talking about that in Detroit last year. That yeah. was that was a talk. Um, so the fleet and the 11, they've got J&D's back again. I know they're going to be at the spring test session, the 9, with, with Andrew Tate. They're coming back strong again, and the I 18's think. 18's working on things. And the 18, uh, Jeff Campbell, I think this is his last season mm -hmm. as a crew chief, or he's going to retire. Yeah, and and, and, and and he's an interesting, that people don't realize that he was a Miss Budweiser crew member for a long time. For a time. long time, and yeah. And his brother Mike, both mm -hmm. of them. So that, that's a that's actually that's a big loss to the sport, right. you know. And, and, and they joined that 9 team, and... Um, the 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 note the difference was noticeable right off the bat that team yeah. that team went from a middle of the pack team to a contender right almost overnight you get, you get those guys turning wrenches and the guy driving it mm -hmm. at, at, uh, he's whole so other good is so good. He, he is very good so in of course then the 12 um you know back again um not sure what they're doing in the off season so well, they did most of their work last year, so this right. was probably an easy off. An easy and off season, so it's it's not uh, we're not seeing an an enormous amount of of boats that have made a commitment to come in, but I think the same ones we've seen we'll see again. That number needs to be bolstered a little bit, though, in order for the f to the field to be 
at what I would call a more healthy rate. Yeah, it's it's a it was a good sign to see teams deciding to take the off season to work on to work, on, to work it, on, right. on boats. Um, it was our opinion, as we just said, that the ninety nine was was done. Mm -hmm. The fact that they have decided to make the effort to fix that boat, uh, which needs tremendous amount of repairs, right. tells me that they're at least confident enough to believe that the sport. Is there's a reason to fix the boat? Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned Bert Henderson working on the two that that boat that the the old old Jim Harvey and Ken Muscatel's old U2 boat. That boat hasn't um, unless it's been outside. It hasn't been wet in in ten years. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they're taking a boat and trying to get it back to competitive and fixing the seven, which um, it's not an easy repair. Yeah, right. I mean the biggest damage on that was ripping the lid off of the of the canopy. But a lot of people don't realize that's mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a really difficult repair. And so it's not it's not nice to see them do that. I've never been as worried about the fleet size mm -hmm. as I am the schedule size. Right. And and I think the fact that uh, with Madison as a full race this year, with Guntersville coming on, and 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 boy, the excitement in Guntersville, it, you can almost feel it. It's, it's it, 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 it looks like it could be a really big race. They're going to be back to six races this year. Mm -hmm. If they can add a couple races in the next couple of years and get this numbered up to eight or nine, then we can see the sport really start to recover. It, I, I'm hopeful that last year was rock bottom. Right. Um, we won't know until we start seeing numbers. Who shows up for Gundersville? Who shows up here? Mm -hmm. um, if 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 Dan Cole and, and company end up having to fight H1 to get five boats here, then we'll know that we're still at rock bottom. Right. But if we get seven or eight, even if they're back markers, even even if the 18 shows up and the 99 shows up, it shows that the sport is starting to slowly come back. But this is, boy, you're, I mean, you're talking a 10-year plan at this point. This, right. this sport needs a lot of work. Yeah, it does. And there's a lot of things that need to be, um, for lack of a better term, tweaked mm -hmm. um, to, for the better, for the worse, whatever. Uh, some some number situations that need to be taken care of with, with financial po portion of it. But that needs to be taken care of now for future years and not now for now. Right. Um, so... You look at Madison, I know they've they've added the music festival, kind of made it a bigger deal. I just talked to Dan Cole the other day about um, things that they're doing. They're working on, you know, bigger and better things. Bigger and better things also cost money. They've got uh, Midwest Two Mills coming in as, as a title sponsor. So they've got some things on the positive horizon. It's just you know both the entities have to, to to mirror it together to make it work yeah but it's a really smart move what madison's doing adding the music festival yep. um it's really in the same concept of seattle using the blue angels sure it's it's not the same exact thing you're talking about an air show versus a music festival but the idea is to get people who aren't necessarily boat fans to come into the gate and what mm -hmm. did you say when you were president of the regatta you didn't care why they came into the gate as long as they put their 25 dollars down right and that's the whole purpose of that i think i think i think adding this music's always been a part of the regatta but sure. it's never been a focused part it's mm -hmm. always been kind of a for lack of a better term, I guess like a, a, an afterthought. Right. And you kind of throw it on there. Oh, we're we're going to th throw music over here in the Just corner. to have. But to make this a, a equal parts music and and uh, hydroplane festival, I think is a terrific idea. And it's something that, um, you know, we always want things to happen right away. Mm -hmm. and, and you're not going to have, you're not going to have Bruno Mars show up to this music festival in its second year. So it's something that you build and make it bigger and bigger. And at some point, m make it so that people can say, well, I'm going to the regatta this year. And they may never see a boat hit the water, mm -hmm. but I don't care because they paid their money. And if you can get, I don't know, if you get 10,000 people to come to the race and you get 5,000 people to come to a music festival, suddenly you've got something working. It's a, it's a, it's a good idea, and it's something that, frankly, most sites are starting to look at because right. this is not a sport that can carry itself anymore. And this is not a sport... I don't believe the answer is to throw more boats at it. Right. And and I and you to San Diego has 19 different classes of boats that run at their race, and you and I've been there. Mm -hmm. They have about a thousand people who show up for it. Right. You have to have another reason, and and, and what Madison's doing is a great idea. I think I think so as well. Gunnersville, we mentioned them first race. We were down there last year for the exhibition. Um, a big lake, and it fingers into a lot of different portals and 
They, apparently they've got their race site set where they want it. Should be a nice venue. I think it should be a great venue and, and, and the weather should be terrific in, in northern Alabama in in late June. It, it, it was it was a little hot last year. Ooh, yes it was. <laughs> we, and then we had the, the air conditioner on full blast <laughs> and we didn't turn it even down one notch until Nashville yeah. on the way back. But uh, um, no, it's a beautiful area down there. If people have been down there, it's like imagine if you flooded downtown Madison. You yeah. know, it's it, the hills and it's gorgeous and the, the, the most exciting thing, I think, is, and we felt it last year for an exhibition, is the amount of people who are excited about the race. Oh, yeah. How often does, does H1 put together a race someplace and people don't know what it is yeah. and they don't care? Or you know they come out as a curiosity. These people are excited. They had they had several hundred people for a, for a two boat exhibition. Well, three if you count the yeah. the old Gale boat right. that was running. And it was it was fun to watch. And there's signs around town, and there were all kinds of other things going on. It was it's that's the part that I like because as as a as a as a race group, mm -hmm. that's what you need to look for to see if you can build that excitement and start to splinter off because yeah. there may be somebody who's got money who goes to that race and says you know what we got a we got a big lake in georgia yeah. i'd like to have one of these races yeah. who knows it was it was nice to see the community a talking about it but everybody was kind of working off the same page everybody wanted you know hey come on down let's let's come down to the lake and watch what the boat's going on and they were they were pretty excited and that's that's good to see that that they're getting behind that um as we wind things down I know it's going to be a busy summertime. We've got spring sports. We've got boat racing. We've got fairs and all this other stuff going on. Does it ever end for you? I mean, does it ever get unexciting for you? Uh, mm, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the politically correct <laughs> answer. You know, when, when, you're, when you're at the end of a sports season and all of your teams are struggling, uh, that makes it the hardest right and, and that's the one where you say to yourself gosh you know I uh, I can't wait till the season's <laughs> over I just want to take a vacation but the great thing about covering sports is that every single day it can be something different mm -hmm. and that's what I love about yeah. it and if you work at you know if you work in a fast food restaurant if you work in a factory if you work at any place if you work in an office you're an accountant it's the same thing over and over again. You probably love it. Right. Because that's why you do it. But in sports, you never know what you're going to see that day. Yeah. You never know what you're going to be a part of, and that's the part that I love. It's it's something different every day. I agree. That's why I've been doing this 20 years, and you've been doing what you've doing mm -hmm. 20 years, and always coming back for more. Yeah, we're practically work anniversary buddies. That's right. We started about almost the exact same time. Same same time covering. Madison Regatta, mm -hmm. 1998. 1998, so, yeah, the Labor Day race. The Labor Day race. So, Dave, our time is up. Thanks for being on this morning. I'm glad you're back in town. No problem. Anytime. I'm glad to be back in town. Hopefully, maybe we'll make it permanent again someday. Oh, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Dave Campbell again, uh, kind of freelancing right now for the Madison Courier, doing some other things. Of course, uh, living up in Greenwood, Indiana right now, but down uh, helping out uh, while they've got some vacation things going on at the Madison Courier. Nice to have Dave in. And, Appreciate you stopping by for uh, Coach's Corner this morning. We'll do it again next Saturday, live from McDonald's here on Madison's Hilltop. For A.J. Bramer in studio, I'm Tim Torrance, also my guest Dave Campbell. Don't forget, uh, if you're driving out today, folks, uh, be careful. The roads are uh, very slushy out uh, today, depending on where you're at. If you're on the hill, if you're downtown, the roads are a little bit better, but uh, it's going to continue pretty much all day long, so be careful as you're traveling out. I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for joining us from Coach's Corner here on Works 96.7.